In this video, I would like to cover the best sources for learning about the life of St. Patrick. So not a total overview of his life, but just the best place to go uh, if you want to find out more. So here we are on my blog, and I made a post, uh, one of my earlier posts, that's very important in regards to this subject. Uh, I'm just showing this from the first page um so that you can see where exactly to access it and it's titled the general overview of best sources for the life of saint patrick so what i go into in this post is especially really warnings uh because saint patrick was um a massively influential saint on on irish history uh he's going to attract the attention of of all sorts of people basically not all of them sincere christians um so in the university context uh, a lot of these professors who who might write articles or even entire books on saint patrick um stop and think about it for a moment before you get one of these books some of these people as most serious christians realize that the university systems are not um, unbiased whenever it comes to, to these topics. So what they write about St. Patrick, um, it can be disguised, but it can be have a very anti-Christian uh, intention from the outset. Maybe even the person writing the book is not is not fully aware of that, but they have a certain paradigm if they're an atheist or, or something like this, by which they're going to uh, write something radically different to how a Christian is going to write about St. Patrick. So that's something very important to know, especially as I as I point out in this post, um, in the university system, saying something controversial, saying something incredible, saying something nobody else has ever said before is going to be one of the best ways to uh, get more money, get promotions, um, gain a reputation. So you, it's very important to be careful about this. If you have this good intention in your heart, you want to learn more about St. Patrick, um, not, to, not to stumble into these kind of, um, these kind of writers. Um, so what, what I go on to say after that warning is, well, what what is the best? Well, the best is clearly from the Orthodox perspective going to be the earliest. The things that actually fit into what we would call a church tradition. Um, so I talk about that a bit there. Some of the sources um, that we can that we can find that are still very accessible today. You know, um, this is a saint who was primarily active in the 5th century, we actually have a lot of writings about St. Patrick and even by St. Patrick. He's, he's one of the best documented saints from, from such an early century. And uh, it's very sad that he's so well known. And yet at the same time, there's these excellent documents about him, by him. And uh, unfortunately, most people really really don't know about them. And uh, so now we're going back to my list of posts. And the next one I would like to show you is this, the collection of writings by or about St. Patrick. So in the first post there, um, an overview of the best sources, I was essentially recommending these. And um, no, no problems about having to search for these in some old... Uh, dusty libraries. I've got them here on my blog. Um, you can come here and get them all as one document. So that includes uh, the writings by St. Patrick and also the hagiographies uh, written about him, um, as well as the Deer's Cry, which appears in a larger text called The Tripartite Life of St. Patrick. Um, I don't. I haven't put up the whole document because it's a little bit harder to find. I have found it, but it's a little bit harder and it's not in the best format. And also it's a, a slightly later document. So I just took out this um, prayer 
and uh, perhaps in the future on the blog, uh, I will include uh, all of that uh, document where the Dare's Cry appears. And also this um, hymn of Secondinus, which is um, about, uh, it's about St. Patrick. Um, so yes, these are, these are excellent. They're very readable. Um, you know, I want to emphasize that. And uh, anyone who has some interest in, in St. Patrick or, or Irish Christianity, that really is the going to be the, the best place to go, I think. Go to the earliest sources. And then later on, if you read um, a book, a more modern book, if you've already read those early sources, you're going to see it through this, this prism. You're going to be well grounded in those documents that were written by, in some cases, literally by St. Patrick. And you're going to be able to judge a lot better these modern writers if they uh, are, are being sincere or not, uh, you know, if, if they're being Christian or, or not. Um, and there's a final thing, uh, very interesting thing written more uh, recently, which was in general about the Breton law. And there's a section, uh, I'll scroll down to it, that is about St. Patrick and his connection to the Breton law. So if you'd like, the, the whole thing is, is a bit longer. Uh, if you're only interested in St. Patrick, you could skip to that point. I'm just scrolling down to show you the, the length of that. See, just that much. So not too long and uh, very interesting stuff because the Breton law was um, the legal system in Ireland that uh, preceded the arrival of Christianity. And this is something very interesting from the Orthodox perspective because of uh, our doctrine of symphonia, uh, the, this sort of harmonious relationship between the church and state. And St. Patrick, when he arrives, uh, whenever he has this connection to the, to the king, he doesn't come and, and obliterate the pre-existing law. Instead, there's a kind of uh, Christianization of the law. So um, a very interesting uh, topic as well. And that's all the information I have on my blog about St. Patrick. It's all very interesting stuff. And, and I think uh, an excellent place to start. Um, and even if you know a few things about St. Patrick, you might learn something uh, from these posts, or perhaps you've heard a few things secondhand. I think you'll benefit a lot from reading the uh, those earlier sort of primary sources uh, directly. Um, so, yeah, that's all. Um, thanks for listening. <laughs>